and welcome back to Cruising Coasters. I'm Jeff, and today we are at America's Rock and Roller Coast, Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio, and I am so excited that we're here. We drove the four hours from Buffalo to Sandusky this morning, and we're back here at Cedar Point. We did come earlier this year in June before I had started vlogging, and I thought that was going to be my last visit here. Um, I even put up like an Instagram thing. I was like, see you in 2024, Cedar Point. Um, so this is like a last minute uh, change to the trip. We were gonna do two days at Canada's Wonderland, but we ended up doing just the one day yesterday with Fastlane, and then we came here for the day. Um, and we have Fastlane for today here at Cedar Point. Um, very excited to be here. I'm very like, this park is very nostalgic to me. I grew up about an hour away. I worked here for a little bit and met many, many friends that I am still friends with today here working at the park. So I just love coming back here. Filled with a ton of memories from my childhood and just love riding all the coasters, the rides, food, the fun. Oh, it's gonna be such a great day here at Cedar Point. Let's go get in the park. And we made it into the park and we've acquired our Fastlane Plus, which is the same exact wristband as it was yesterday. I promise it's not the same one, but it is the same wristband from yesterday, which is funny. And I see Cedar Point is still celebrating their 150th anniversary uh, three years later. There's just something so iconic about coming down the Cedar Point main midway, roller coasters everywhere. Oh, it's such an amazing feeling being here at this park. I love it so, so much. We have decided that our first ride of the day is going to be on the iconic Millennium Forest, the park's Giga Coaster. Um, if you didn't know, Giga Coaster is a roller coaster that's over 300 feet tall. Opened up in 2000, 310 feet tall, 300 foot drop, 93 miles an hour. Super long, fun coaster. Um, so yeah, we're gonna hit up Millennium Forest first. I always forget until I come to this park just how massive it is and how long it takes to get anywhere. Um, but it's such a beautiful park. There's rides everywhere. There's so much to look at. So I honestly don't mind it. You can see the uh, park has started the painting for Top Thrill 2, which will be opening up next year. Very exciting. I think the white with the gray supports, it's actually gonna look, I think, really nice. And I really hope they do like a very nice like lighting package for it to light up the white track. It's gonna look really, really well done. We decided to do the movable locker, so you can buy a locker one time for $12 and move it to different rides throughout the day. Um, so that's not a bad deal. So we have a, a bag with a couple of supplies, a water bottle, battery pack, that kind of thing. And it's nice that they have these lockers at all the different rides that you can use throughout the day. Pay one price at the beginning of the day and then move your locker around. I think that's super nice. As mentioned, we do have Fastlane Plus for the day. And I want to keep you guys updated on if I think it was worth it. So right now Millennium Force is posted a 45 minute wait and it says 15 minutes for Fastlane. So we'll see if that holds true, but if so, that would be a 30 minute saving. So I'll try to keep you guys updated throughout the day on how much time Fastlane Plus saved us at the end of the day. Millennium Forest is complete. We ended up waiting exactly 15 minutes, so we saved about 30 minutes with our fast lane. Plus, uh, Millennium Force is just such a fun ride. I think it's had a variety of reputations over the years. It came out and everyone loved it. It was the biggest, the baddest, the best. And then <clears throat> people kind of like crap on it, and give it a hard time, call it Millennium Forceless. But the speed is just incredible through the entire ride. It's smooth, it's fun, it's long, it's enjoyable. It's just like such a fun coaster. Um, I wish people would just like it for what it is. It's not like super intense and crazy, but I don't think it needs to be. Like for when it came out in the year 2000, like that was crazy. Um, I don't know, it's just fun. I really love it. I love how iconic it is. The first drop, the first overbank, it's such positive forces on it. And then the last little speed hill by the station, you get like nice little floater, like flowjector airtime. I know, it's fun. I like Millennium. I don't know if it was the Panda Express that we could smell in the line, but I am starving now and craving some food. So I think we're gonna head to the back of the park because we wanna get to Maverick and Steel Vengeance next. But on our way there, we're gonna stop at the farmhouse 
and have some lunch. Okay, shout out to the workers who literally got us through that line in like five minutes. I got the hand, breaded chicken tenders, the pasta for a side, Josh got the steak and wedges. And then it comes with, if I remember correctly, this biscuit is like, unbelievably good funny story is like josh and i got drinks last at the same time so we have the all season drink plan too so we can get a drink every 15 minutes mine said it was like not good for another like, three minutes josh said this is fine i don't know how that worked out so i'll have to wait a few minutes and i can get my drink i don't think i've ever seen potato wedges literally so massive can you hold up that one french fry oh my god that is huge oh my god that's like half a big <laughs> potato Lunch was absolutely amazing. The farmhouse is such a good value, such a good place to eat, especially if you have the all day or season long dining, you get such a nice portion. Chicken tenders were great, a little salty. My blood pressure is definitely rising. The pasta is like my favorite. It is so good. Um, but yeah, I think we're off to Maverick, which currently has a 75 minute wait. Um, and it's about 15 minutes for fast lane. So let's go on Maverick. This is one of my favorites in the park, opened in 2007. 105 foot drop, 95 degree angle, and a 72 mile an hour launch. Tons of fun. Let's go get on. Woo, Maverick's queue is looking very, very full. 75 minute line, it looks to be true. That's gotta be one of the best rides that I've ever had on Maverick. We got front row, we were on in five minutes. The wait time was 75, we waited five. So we saved 70 minutes there with our fast lane plus. We got a front row ride. It was so smooth, so filled with airtime. Um, the, the whips and the turns, the stangle dive is just so good. Ugh, everything about Maverick was just chef's kiss, 10 out of 10, such a good coaster. Can't wait to come back to it later. Up next, of course, is going to be this beautiful RMC Hyper Hybrid Steel Vengeance. Oh, looks so good. Vengeance. We waited exactly 30 minutes and train. And that was with about a 10 minute downtime. Someone actually lost their shoe getting off the train and it fell in like the track, so they had to shut it down for about 10 minutes. So we waited, I would say 20 minutes, uh, take away the downtime. Line was posted 60, so we saved 40 minutes there. Um, amazing ride as usual. And it was even trimmed pretty heavy in the mid course, and we still had a phenomenal second half of the ride. Complete ejected airtime. My favorite element is when you're going like around the left and you like take that zero G roll up into it. It's such a fun like floaty element that just feels like you're never going to end, like stop spiraling. It's so much fun, such a good ride and it deserves every ounce of praise that it gets because it's just long, the zero G is amazing, the inversions are fun and floaty, going through the structure is amazing. It's just such a cool ride, such an amazing addition to this park. An interesting thing to note, they normally have lockers that you can use in the queue to put away like your phone, keys, wallet, like small things, and they're free. Their system is down, so they're making everyone get a paid locker or leave it with a non-rider. Not really a great experience there, and I think it's actually really affecting the amount of people that are going in the queue, because um, the park is pretty busy, but Steel Vengeance is only about a, an hour wait, and uh, the queue wasn't even that full. So hopefully they can fix the lockers because that's a really nice to have especially because you have the metal detection and you can't take anything on with you even if you tried to
ride was great as always. Such a good classic coaster. Reminds me of my childhood riding with my family. Um, a lot of fun. It was advertised 30 minutes. We waited five uh, with our fast lane, and I call that a win. And we we actually won. I we were trimless in both trimmed uh, spots in Gemini, which I don't think I've ever had. So that was a lot of fun. Um, not much else to say. Okay, bye. favorites it's not my favorite in the park it's just so fun i know everyone loves the magic seat one three which is very good but my favorite seat is six one right side on the lake it's just so pretty so much fun i love being in the back of the train and just watching the train go over those like triangle hills in front and watching everyone like launch up out of their seats it's such a good time uh wait time was posted 20 minutes we waited 10 so saved us uh 10 minutes around our wait time we're having an absolutely amazing day it's so so pretty out today a little warm but it is a beautiful day if you guys didn't know cedar point is on a peninsula hope you probably knew that but in case you didn't there you go and there's a beautiful beach that you can go to so we've decided to go walk along the beach and go see what views we can get we'll take you along let's go uh let's go check out the beach We were getting some off-ride footage of Magnum, came down to the beach, and now having a nice chill with a nice refresher, and just enjoying this very hot, beautiful day at the Cedar Point Beach. We uh, finally came back in the park and decided to do Magnum again since our stuff was still in the locker, and we did the magic seat this time, seat one three. That is wild. That is insane. For like a coaster that's like over 30 years old, that is absolutely insane. But in like the best ways. I loved it so much. I love I, I love Magnum. It's so uh, people are like so polarized whether if it's good or not. I think it's like one of the best coasters out there. I am obsessed and I love it so much. We decided that we're gonna skip out on the corkscrew. Um, it's not because I think it's too rough. I actually really enjoy it and I love the history behind it. But um, the shoulder restraints just have to come down way too far, and I'm six foot five, and it puts me in a really uncomfortable position. So we're gonna skip it this time. Cedar Point tradition is that I always have to get a cheese on a stick at some point during the day in line for Iron Dragon. And uh, next year, this is gonna be much different. This is where Top Bill 2's reverse spike is gonna go 420 feet up in the air. So that's gonna be wild to see. So excited for it. You can see they've done a lot of work on it. A lot of track is in place already. Took a quick little trip on Iron Dragon, which, just so you know, does not have fast lane or fast lane plus. Um, advertised at 20-ish minutes, I think it was, and then we waited about 30. Uh, so not too bad, but we got a nice little overview of Top Drill 2, and the construction looks really good. A lot of track is in place, very exciting stuff for next year. Um, I think we're gonna head to Rougarou next, and uh, check out that Flowless Coaster.
Ooh, am I right? <laughs> Just kidding. I actually really like Rougarou. I'm, I'm only a little salty because I'm one of the weird ones that's partial to a stand-up coaster. I actually really enjoy them. Um, so I miss Mantis. But like going through, oh my gosh, first of all, Rougarou is running nuts so fast. It was flying through the course. The G-forces are great. You get the tingles in the feet and everything. Um, but it's like wild to think that you used to do that like standing up with like a bike seat. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Rougarou and I think it gets hated on way too much. It's actually, I think it's really intense. I, I really enjoyed it. Having this like hot traditional summer weather has actually made me really grateful for the weather that we did have when we were in Europe. I know I complained a lot about the rain. I did, I do wish it rained less, but I was very, or I am, I should say, I am very thankful that it was much cooler because if we had days like this when we were in Europe in the summer and it was just like hot and sunny day after day, there's no way I could have done three weeks. Like there's just no way I could do three weeks with this weather. That's, that would be nuts. Uh, so I am thankful it was quite cooler than this, than it is today. Speaking of which, if you found this vlog because you're looking for Cedar Point content and you didn't know, I went to Europe for three weeks and I vlogged the whole thing. I went to, I think I ended up being 16 or 17 different theme parks across 22 days around Europe, which was so much fun. Um, and I've just had a blast like vlogging that I just kind of kept doing it. So hopefully you guys are still enjoying it. If you guys are liking it, give the video a like. Now it's a good time to give the video a like. longest line of the day so far was Bell Raven. It was posted at 90 minutes for standby and with Fastlane we waited five minutes and got on. So we saved 85 minutes with Fastlane Plus there. Totally worth it. Um, after going on Yukon Striker yesterday a few times and then Bell Raven today, it's very interesting because Yukon Striker is just much much better. So if you've been on both, I'd love to know in the comments which one do you guys like better? Yukon Striker or Bell Raven? At the, uh, near the entrance of the park, they have this 150th tribute with these bricks that you could purchase uh, for the 150th anniversary. And Josh and I did buy a brick back in 2020, and we've spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to find it with no luck so far. I think we've really spent like 20 minutes like reading the bricks. We literally can't find it. I don't even know if it exists. We have like a cute little replica of it at home that they sent, which is fun, um, but I still have not been able to find the actual brick here yet. So we're gonna try to keep finding it and see if we can uh, find our brick. I feel like there's gotta be a story to Maverick stole our kidney. I feel like I need to know what happened. 10 minutes later, we still can't find it. I think we've literally spent like almost 30 minutes looking for the brick. So Josh just said he's gonna go line by line because we cannot get defeated by this. We have to find this brick. Where is it? We are officially calling it a fail and we just can't find it. But we spent like over half an hour looking for it and it's just too hot to care anymore. So we're moving on. And I think we're gonna go catch right on Gatekeeper next, the park's wing coaster. Also, like one of the smoothest wing coasters I think I've ever been on, like smoothest I've seen Gatekeeper run um, in many years. So I don't know if it's like new wheels or something, but it felt just very smooth, not very much bounce to it. Like X-Flight was like really rumbly and bouncy. This one was really, really fun. Um, some good forces on there too. Like, listen, like not ejector, not like crazy positives, but like it had some good force to it. It's just like a really fun coaster that like the whole family could ride together and it's like not too scary. 
but it's like not like a junior coaster. And like the fly through over the entrance is just so much fun. I think that's perfect. Um, I think we're gonna go catch a ride on Raptor next, and then it'll probably be about time for dinner. So let's head to Raptor. here in the park it's blue streak built in 1964. this is actually my first roller coaster i ever went on as a kid was blue streak so a lot of memories of me my brother my mom and dad riding this roller coaster I remember my brother and i used to lap this one over and over and over again uh, this one in disaster transport we used to go on just like over and over and over again as a kid so so many memories so many uh fun times here on the blue streak so let's go take a ride Blue Streak is running absolutely unhinged. That thing is wild. That is not a family coaster. That is absolutely insane. Also, I love when you're on uh, Blue Streak, you can actually see the old trains from Dragster. They're still here. Uh, makes me wonder like what the plan is for them. Like I saw somewhere online that someone said they're gonna use them for parts of the accelerator, but that doesn't seem to be true. So wondering what they're holding them on for. I feel like use them as like a, like in the roller coaster museum or something or what they'll end up doing with them, who knows. How can I find literally everybody's brick but my own? My friend Megan, if you're watching, I found your brick, but um, I still can't find mine. All right, it's a little after six o'clock and we've decided that it is time to use our second meal of our meal plan for the day. And we are gonna go check out the pavilion. We ate here a couple times when we came back in June and we really enjoyed it. But I've heard that they actually changed the menu like part way through the season. So we're gonna go check it out and see what the pavilion has to offer for dinner. Uh, apparently it is called the Grand Pavilion. My apologies. We didn't know she was so fancy. Also, I totally lied about the time. It's like after 7 p.m. Thank you. Um, definitely thought it was much earlier than what it actually is. Oops. Just having so much fun losing track of time. For dinner, I went with the fish tropical rice and it came with a roll. Joshi got the steak roll and a marinated cucumber salad. They had other options shrimp. like uh, chicken, the funnel cake shrimp, and then they also had like uh, chicken tender, something really basic that you could have. So you have tons of options here on the Grand Pavilion. It looks absolutely amazing. This is our uh, view for dinner. This is literally where we're sitting. You cannot, you cannot argue with the view like this. This is absolutely incredible. 10 out of 10 Cedar Point. The Grand Pavilion is phenomenal. We just devoured our meals. I can't tell you enough how much I would recommend eating here at the Grand Pavilion. The fish was so fresh and flavorful. The, the tropical um, fried rice was amazing. Josh said his steak was incredible. This marinated cucumber thing was like probably my favorite thing. That's like a sleeper hit. Oh my gosh. And then the rolls dipped in like the steak butter. Like you, it doesn't get better than that. Like this is such a good deal. And then also you cannot beat these views that we have right now of the park and of the, oh, or the ocean, <laughs> the lake. Ah, uh, absolutely stunning evening here.
sunset so much that we decided we're going to hop on the giant wheel, which we're on right now, and get some sunset footage. I'll put that in next. If you hate sunsets and beautiful things, you can skip to the time on the screen. But if you want to see sunsets and beautiful things, enjoy, because it's an absolutely stunning night here at the park. Because life is still a mystery. spectacular views. Um, we're gonna do some last rides. We're gonna do, we wanna do Millennium again, we wanna do Maverick, Mill um, Millennium, Maverick, Steel Vengeance, and then probably end the night on Magnum um, before we head out. So we have a couple hours left, get a couple of night rides in, and enjoy the rest of the evening here at Cedar Point. <laughs> Night ride on Millennium Force done, and I think that is where that ride shines. That was a phenomenal ride on that coaster. We were in the third car, and we were got some floater airtime on the first airtime help out, and then we got some like flow jacked around the way back in, and then that pop of airtime before the airtime or before the station was incredible. Night rides on Millennium just hit different. That ride was flying and absolutely so much fun. Such a good ride. So we we're trying to get a uh, night ride on Steel Vengeance, and the locker system used in the queue is still down. And then, um, so you can't take anything into the queue with you, like your phone, while the keys you have to do the pre paint lockers out front. Well, those are full because everyone is obviously using them. So you have to either get a locker, um, there's like some near Skyhawk, near Mine Ride, uh, Millennium Force, or Magnum, and then walk all the way back here. So don't love that. I think that they, when the lockers go down, they need to have some other option uh, than just like not having an option basically. But what can you do? Uh, make the best of it. So I think we're gonna just bail on Steel Vengeance tonight. We've done a night ride before. It's great, it's fine. Um, I think we're ahead to Magnum um, because that's also a really fun night ride that I think a lot of people uh, miss out on. So, to Magnum. Final night ride on Magnum. That is going to do it for our day here at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. And we had an absolutely amazing day. If you would have asked me a year ago what my favorite theme park in Ohio was, it wouldn't have been this one. It would have been Kings Island. 
And I don't know what it is about this year, but with both of our visits, I just feel like the park has gotten its like charm back that like years ago it just had. And I wish I could tell you exactly what it was, but I think it's just a combination of the operations are like incredible this year. The food has been spectacular. The people have been so nice. Just everything is just really, really well done. And like Cedar Point has just gotten some of that charm back. And this has just turned into one of my absolute favorite parks in the entire world again. And that makes me so, so happy. <laughs> Um, so anyway, Fastlane, was it worth it today? I think so. I'll put on the screen um, how much time we saved uh, all day. I definitely can't do the math now in my head. Um, but I don't think like you need it on a day like today. I think you could have definitely done everything if you had been strategic about it. But what it does do is it lets you be very flexible throughout your day. We didn't have to worry about where are the crowds, where are the lines. We could kind of just do what we wanted to do at our own pace, which is great. And I think that that was worth it. So, future Jeff. I'm so sorry for how long this vlog was because this one is definitely going to be a long one to edit. But I hope you guys had so much fun. I had a great day here at Cedar Point. I think we'll end the vlog here. So if you want to see more coaster content like this, make sure you guys subscribe. Um, if you liked it, follow, or hit the like button. Uh, fight the YouTube algorithm. Keep cruising and coasting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, one last thing before we before we totally end the video. I guess this is a good time to tell you, um, this actually isn't the last time we're coming to Cedar Point this year. We will be back to Cedar Point. So this video is dropping at the end of September. We're coming back in just a couple of weeks to Cedar Point and Kings Island to do Hollow Weekends at Cedar Point and Haunt at Kings Island. I'm so excited. Spooky season is my absolute favorite, especially in a place where you can actually wear a sweatshirt, get cold. Uh, I'm so excited for fall up here in Ohio. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, Hollow Weekends and Haunt vlogs coming very soon. Bye guys.